So a little bit about Stratasys uh, and who we are. Uh, we're, we, we're a company that's been around for over 25 years. Um, 3D printing for a lot of people is a new technology. Um, you know, you're, you're seeing it on Grey's Anatomy and other shows as, as something that uh, is brand new or, or uh, have, you haven't really seen it necessarily, but it has been around for a while. Um, actually, 3D printing in the medical space goes back um, uh, a couple of decades. Um, it's, it's one of the uh, earlier applications. Um, but um, as a company, we've been around for 25 years years, we're a global company, and, uh, and we really pride ourselves in our technology leadership uh, in terms of all the intellectual property uh, and patents and, and awards that we've received for innovation. When we look at hospital applications for 3D printing, we really know that there's two things that everyone in, in the space is going to really want to focus on. The first is, how does it improve the patient's outcomes and the quality of life uh, and uh, clinical, clinical preparedness of surgeons, et cetera? And then, how does it impact the, the economics of the entire ecosystem, right, for care delivery? So if you're going to be applying a new technology into a medical environment, you need to make sure that it's, it's making patients' lives better, uh, improving outcomes, and it's also going to be economically uh, viable uh, in, in a cost-constrained environment. So when we look at the space, we see really four key applications uh, in a hospital that our customers are, are engaging in. And the first is one that I think we've talked about a lot today, which is patient care. Right? So that's, that could be, include surgical planning, but it also can be personalized procedure kits um, and other ways that, that 3D printing can uh, interact or be involved directly in patient care. Clinical training and education, which uh, the folks at the Jacobs Institute referenced earlier, uh, is another application where we see strong adoption here, where hospitals, uh, medical schools, have typically trained physicians using cadavers, using animal models, uh, using uh, alternative ways of training physicians on new techniques, new procedures. Now there's a capability of 3D printing realistic anatomy that's clinically relevant and um, going to enhance that surgical situation. The third application is really once you've, once you've adopted 3D printing, for some of the other applications, we see a lot of institutions realizing the ad additional benefits to create custom tools. Uh, could be in your research labs, it could be in uh, even in the clinical scenario, but be able to create these tools, jigs, fixtures for testing, for research, uh, or even for patient care that uh, once you have the technology, because 3D printing is so dynamic, it's so versatile, you see a, you see a problem. It's not like uh, you, you, you know, if you got a hammer, you're always using a hammer. You can create any kind of a tool that you need to, to meet that specific need. Uh, and then finally, hospital innovation. So a lot of your institutions, um, the physicians are actively engaged all the time in patient care and thinking about how to improve, uh, what, what's a better way for this device to be designed to, to uh, to have better outcomes. Um, and so having that capability on site to take a physician's idea and turn it into a physical object is rapid prototyping. And it helps the physician, it helps the, the hospital's technology uh, or innovation center with advancing that technology and advancing that research to a point where um, perhaps you can commercialize it, partner with a medical device company, uh, and, and take it further down the development path. So, what solutions does Stratasys have uh, in 3D printing? We have uh, really two technology platforms. One of them is called FDM, which is Fused Deposition Modeling. Um, the, the models that are built uh, with FDM, they're, they're more durable, they are, they're highly accurate, but they're also able to be used in, in functional applications. And so we have um, high-grade thermoplastics uh, with a range of, of uh, capabilities to be able to create functional devices uh, and often used in prototyping. And the other capability we have is called PolyJet. And this is a liquid cured uh, polymer that is able to be, create very smooth, very high resolution, fine featured prototypes. Um, you have full color capability with our latest printer that was launched called the J750. Um, and 
it is able to incorporate multiple materials at the same, the same time. Um, and so an example of that would be uh, with this model here, you can see we've got the, the, flexible, the flexible vascular model in between a more rigid shell. Uh, and so it incorporates both soft and hard, and then obviously it incorporates color, um, as well as transparency uh, within a single model. When we think about medical models specifically, there's a couple of features that we really emphasize um, that you should be considering as you evaluate technologies. The first is resolution. So the ability to replicate fine anatomy, small features. Um, if you're a, a, lot of, a lot of anatomy can be larger, right? If you're doing, if you're doing bones, um, perhaps the resolution isn't as important. But if you're doing fine vasculature, um, or let's say uh, you're doing a cochlea, uh, and you're trying to, to uh, print out you know, some of the smallest bones in the human body, uh, you really want a high resolution printer. The ability to incorporate soft and hard within the single print. Um, it's going to make the models more dynamic to be able to dissect them uh, with, a, with a scalpel or surgical instrument, uh, but then also to be able to, to drill into bone or, or, or cut bone, uh, bone-like models uh, as well. Um, the ability to represent different colors either through photorealism. Uh, and so for an example of that, this is a model that was printed on the J750, um, and you can see that it uh, you know, essentially has a photographic um, layer built onto it, so it, it really appears uh, like the anatomy. And then, of course, when you're in a hospital environment, you want something that is going to be uh, safe and, and uh, kind of hospital friendly in terms of, of uh, not introducing dangerous chemicals or, um, uh, or processes. And then finally, uh, being able to easily clean these models. I think you've probably all talked about that or heard that, um, that depending on the complexity, especially with organic shapes, cleaning these models can be a challenge. And so having a printer that has soluble support capability to more easily clean out these models is highly desirable. And so for Stratasys, we have a range of printers uh, within the PolyJet line, starting with a, a desktop size that, that can print uh, smaller models, but they're, they're single material. Um, that would be the Object 24 and Object 30 Prime and Pro series. Uh, then we have some standalone systems uh, able to print larger, uh, and they start to incorporate soluble support into, into the printer for easier cleaning uh, and a larger model base. And then finally, what we call the production series, which is the, the object um, 350 and 500, uh, as well the Connex 3, which is three materials, and then the J750, which is six materials simultaneously. And this is where you can start incorporating soft and rigid materials in a single print, multiple colors um, as well, and of course, uh, including the soluble support. So here's uh, my contact information. I also put up here, uh, we have a series that we put out once a month called the Medical Innovation Series, where we essentially email, uh, say it's an email newsletter, some new topic in uh, medical 3D printing, uh, kind of taking the Stratasys perspective, whether it's on a regulatory issue or um, you know, perhaps a hospital development or orthotics and prosthetics, or really a range of topics within medical. Um, so you can go to that website to sign up for it. Um, but you can also, you see my email address, my phone number, feel free to reach out with me if, any, if there are questions unanswered uh, today that uh, we leave with. <laughs>